Hello again, everybody. Continuing um, a discussion about which is the best meter. Yesterday, I was alluding to this being the best meter for the reasons that I stated before. As you can see, this is the regular digital meter. As I specified before, once you put this on volts, DC volts, it tells you DC volts. Here, I have this also on DC volts. No abbreviation, no information over here <clears throat> that this is DC volts. The other thing that I was um, referring to, you only put this on volts, no ranges. Here, you have to put it on the correct range, 1,222. Here, you don't have to worry about anything, for anything, even for ohms. As you see over here, ohms, you might put on, you have to put on 2,000 mega ohms. You see all these ranges? Depending on what you're measuring, you have to put on the correct one. Otherwise, it'll be out of limit and open loop. It'll tell you OL. Over here, simple. Just put on this. Tells you, like I said, in ohms. You're on ohms right now. When you put this on ohms, doesn't tell you on ohms. It just tells you one and a decimal point. That means it's out of limit. That means it's over the, the range of the scale. This tells you at a limit, open loop, and it tells you you're measuring more than 40 mega ohm. Much more simpler. And that's the same thing for every everyone over here. Like you see, this is the ranges. These are the ranges for amps. Over here, I discussed yesterday about <clears throat> minimum, maximum, and average. Here, you don't have any buttons like that. Here, I discussed yesterday about the range. You could put it on... Uh, you could take it out of auto range. This is an auto. I could put it on manual, like I discussed yesterday. To see that video, you can go watch that video here. Nothing like that. Hold button for this. You could put this in memory. Once you pu push this, whatever the measurement is, it's in memory. And you don't have to hold this onto the component. Here, nothing like that. That's why I said for beginners, absolutely, I... Recommend this one, much simplified to use, much cheaper, has the same functions. As you can see, uh, a, uh, AC, DC, millivolts, if you need a small scale. The beeper, this is for the beeper. That means whenever you touch these two leads, it'll beep together. Over here, you have the same function over here. Diode, for diode test, you have that function over here. So those are the only two things in, that are similar. But otherwise, it's confusing to the person who's trying to figure out how to use a multimeter. That's why I recommended this one. Plus, obviously, this has the light. As you can see now, it's dark. You can't see it. So I go only with this one. You could get this probably less than $100 on, on, uh, on, on, online. And this is the old model. 83 is the old model. Now they're up more up to 87 89 much more uh, complex meters, but like, but this, I recommend this, and remember yesterday I spoke to you, maybe the video didn't come out that clear, when you want the blue, meaning if you want, if I want D uh, 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 DC, AC, you press this one, if you want microamps in DC, AC, you press this one, okay, now it's on DC, if I press it, it'll put me on. <clears throat> it'll put me on AC. So, if you were wondering what the blue button was for, that's what the blue button was for. Wherever you see something in blue, that means I hit this blue one. Wherever you see something in blue, this is capacitance, a symbol for capacitance. You hit it in blue. So let's say if we want, right now it's on ohms. <clears throat> the default, <clears throat> excuse me, the default is ohms and beeping. But you could put on capacitance. See? Nanofarads. That's capacitance. So straight everything is straightforward. Hertz is when you want to measure, let's say, on AC. When you want to measure a, a cycle, an AC signal has a, a specific frequency. And that is interpreted in Hertz. The unit of measurement for that is called Hertz. So this gives you that option. On this one, you do not have any of those options. <clears throat> also, like we said, continuity and all this, you can have a beep. You hear the beep. 
when you have continuity. That's why I recommend this <clears throat> highly. Relative is like, let's say, when you, met, when you first put the two probes together. That's the first thing you do to make sure these two probes are good. Sometimes it might be broken or open. You short these two together. But let's say I measure 0 0.2, 0 0.3 ohms. When I measure 0 0.2, 0 0.3 ohms, if you're measuring a resistor, and I'm measuring a resistor, let's say that value is um, 0.5 ohms, I have to subtract the how much I measured with these two probes together. So in other words, to simplify that, if I'm probing these two together, I measure 0.3. I go and I measure an, a resistor. That's 0.5. I have to subtract 0.3 from the value, and the true value is 0.2. You have to do that in your head. This relative ohms does it for you. So it'll automatically subtract whatever these two probes are together. Let's say they're 0.2 ohms. Let's say they're 0.3 ohms when I short them together. It'll automatically, it'll subtract that value whenever you measure ohms. It's a good feature to have when you're measuring very low ohms. It makes a difference. So these are the, the things that I recommend. I didn't get a chance to go over everything, but this is much more complicated. I don't recommend this for beginners. It's too, like I said, whenever you put it on, whatever scale you put it on, it doesn't tell you what it's on. This doesn't tell you it's on DC. It doesn't tell me that. It's on ohms. All you get is one point um, a decimal. It doesn't tell me that it's on volts AC. So you don't know, for the beginner, you don't know if you're putting in it properly on the right selector, if you selected the correct one. So, like I said, less than $100, and this is accurate. This is as accurate as they get. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next video.